When is it a good time to sell your Magic Art collection? This is something a lot of collectors, Magic Card players, people who just love the game in general have thought about on countless occasions. You know, when is it time to buy? When is it time to sell? And the good answer for that is, it's a little complicated. You see, because it really depends on what you play or what you collect. But more often than not, it's about what you play. If you play mostly standard, then there's never really a good time or a bad time. The best time to sell, I would say if you have a standard collection, would be before rotation. Because after rotation, usually only one or two cards from a whole set are actually sought after a lot, versus the majority of the cards just kind of just go and turn into bulk pricing. Now, we're gonna talk about modern. Now, when is it a good time to sell your modern collection? Now, this is what I personally believe, and this is just a little bit anecdotal, and this is a little bit to do with uh, price trends over time that I've observed. Now, the best time to sell a collection if it contains mostly modern cards is in between modern masters or just any sort of master set, because that's usually when there's no real speculation, no one's really looking to get rid of their cards because they think that you know a new card is going to come out in a set or whatever. So it's the best time is to wait right in the middle because usually right after a master set, it's not really that good to sell your modern collection because a lot of those modern cards may have been printed in that modern set or that master set. So you want to wait somewhere in between to make that sale because that's when no one really knows what cards are going to be in the next master set. And a lot of people aren't even really thinking about that, to be honest. Now, the trickiest of all would be legacy and vintage. Because legacy and vintage, there is a lot of sets that come out now because modern masters isn't a thing now. They like to make master sets about almost anything. So uh, for legacy, it's a little hard to say when to sell, but there's a lot more cards that you could use it's the, it's the biggest format, it's Legacy. So there's so many cards that you can actually use, just like Commander. So we'll get to that in a bit. But so for Legacy, I think the best time to sell is just when there's more people who are really into the game, when the number of players are up. Right now, uh, the players are down. So it would be a very difficult time to offload that Legacy set and collection. So. Now we're going to talk about vintage magic. So vintage is vintage is probably the most profitable out of all the magic collections that you could have. If like you collect vintage, you're you pretty much have been making liquid money constantly on the upflow for the last 10 years or so, specifically last 3 or 4 years. It has the highest maintaining value out of any of the sets and trends that you could actually buy into. I mean, there's only one thing in my opinion that is probably more sustainable when it comes to investing in, and people say it's a bubble anyways, but the housing market is probably the only thing that I could say right now due to its long history uh, that it's probably the best investment is, is property. However, uh, I really do think that vintage magic is pretty close behind. If you really look at the trends, especially for like dual lands and because of the reserve list, you know, the power nines, and then you have the black lotus, and just, just the amount just the amount of old sets that have uh, a little amount of actual print. That very small print runs, you know, you're talking like uh, you're talking like legends. Very small print run. You have uh, you have uh, oh, why is it my god, this is terrible. Come on, Matt, get your head together. You have Arabian Nights, right? That's another really small set. So a lot of these cards from these sets, uh, because most of them are in the restricted list, will just keep climbing in value, making them a very, very, very good buy. So those ones, I would say, if you're going to look to sell uh, your vintage collection, if it's a massively vintage collection, mostly vintage, I would look to sell them when you have a big life event, when you, maybe you're looking to buy a house, because like I said earlier, uh, housing market is probably the only 
than comparable, but better when it comes to investing because you can rent and you can sustain that value over time. You can't rent out your cards. I mean, you can borrow you can let someone borrow your cards for a tournament, but you know, you can't really rent your cards, but you can rent a house, which is why housing is the best investment. But so now we go to commander. Commander commander is probably the most bizarre when it comes to selling collections because uh, if you're gonna sell play sets, you can't really do that. A commander is usually single cards and a lot of people aren't willing to spend a, a large amount of money on just one single card, especially if you're just gonna sleeve it up, throw it in a commander deck. So commander decks are probably, it's really about the buyer. Um, most commander decks are just most commander cards are sold in just like a massive collection sale or a bulk buy because Unless they're really sought after cards, you're not gonna get a lot of high value for selling your commander collection. So, um, I hope that was a help to you guys. Uh, if it was, drop a like and a comment and you let me know personally what you think is the best time to actually sell your collection and say goodbye to the game or to buy into the game, which maybe I'll do that in another video. Talk about when the best time is to buy into Magic. I mean, there's really no... There's any time's a good time, but you get the gist of it. Okay, guys, MTG Robinson, out.